YouTube, welcome back. What is domain driven design? So, domain driven design, which is DDD, is a software development methodology aimed at improving the creation of complex systems by connecting the implementation to an evolving model of the core business concepts. It's purposed by someone called Eric Evans in his book, Domain Driven Design Tackling Complexity in the Heart of Software. It's a great book, in my opinion. So the DDD focuses on the core domain logic and its complexities instead of primarily focusing on the technical aspects. Let's talk about the key concepts of the domain-driven design. The first thing that we would like to talk about would be something called ubiquitous language. What that means? Ubiquitous means it's everywhere. So we need to use a language that it's everywhere. What that means? That means that DDD emphasizes the use of a common language that is shared between developers and domain experts. This language should be used cons um, uh, consistently in both verbal discussions and the code to ensure clarity and reduce misunderstanding. The second thing that I would like to talk about, which is the bounded contexts. The domain is divided into multiple bounded contexts, and each context delimits the applicability of a particular model so it does not clash with other modules. So the bounded contexts allow teams to work independently and module domain areas in, and, and module domain areas specifically and thoroughly. Number three, we will talk about entities. So these are objects that are not defined by their attributes, but rather by a thread of continuity and identity. Entities have a unique identifier and are mutable. Number four, we have what we call a value objects. So objects that have no conceptual identity and are described by their attributes, they are immutable once they are created. Number five, Aggregates. So a cluster of domain objects, which is entities and value objects, that can be treated as a single unit. Okay? An aggregate will have one root identity, okay, known as an aggregate root and a bound uh, a boundary defined around them. The aggregate root is the only member of the aggregate that outside objects are allowed to hold reference to. Number six, domain events. So these uh, signify something important that happen in the domain. They are trigger side effects across the domain. Events are immutable and should be processed exactly once. Number seven, repos uh, repositories. These are used to retrieve domain objects from the database. Repositories abstract the retriever mechanism and make it easier to access objects in a way that align with the ubiquitous language. Number eight, which is last, Services. So in the DDD, services refer to operations that don't naturally fit within the context of any object. These typically represent actions rather than, a co rather than concepts or things and can be organized into application services and domain services. Let's talk about the advantages of the domain um, of the domain-driven design. The first thing, which I guess is quite ob obvious, which is the improved communication. By establishing a ubiquitous language, there is less room for ambiguity among team members, leading to clearer communication. 
Number two, focus on core business concept. So DDD focuses on uh, focuses the project efforts on core business on core business priorities and domain logic, potentially leading to more relevant and Im- uh, impactful software. Number three, scalability and maintainability. By structuring around bounded contexts, systems become more maintainable and easier to scale or integrate with other systems without the entire architectural being affected. Number four, flexibility in complex environment. So the DDD provides strategies to handle complex scenarios involving requirements and changes in the domain effectively. Let's talk about the challenges that we will face in the domain-driven design. First thing, the complexity. It's really complex, to be honest. So the initial setup and and design can be more complex than traditional methods, particularly for smaller or less complex domains where the overhead may not be justified. Number two, skill requirements. Successfully implementing DDD requires both high-level skills in software design and deep understanding of domain, necessitating close collaboration with domain experts. And number three, which will be the overhead. Uh There can be significant overhead in maintaining the boundaries and ensuring the integrity of domain module, especially in large teams or complex domains. So in conclusion, domain-driven design is especially suitable for complex domains where the business needs are constantly evolving and the complexity must be managed carefully. It encourages practices that help align the, the software design and functionality with business goals, thereby creating a more effective and adaptable systems. So that's it for today's video and see you in the future.